insha'Allah ta'ala this evening on this topic the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just recently two months ago we were in the blessed month of Ramadan and now which month are we in? Dhul Qa'da and what is Dhul Qa'da known for? what is it? what makes it different from the other months? it is from Ashhurul Hurum it is from the sacred months Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ اثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ Indeed in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are 12 months Just like January, February, March until December There are 12 months in the Gregorian calendar And there are also 12 months in the Islamic calendar as well and the evidence is from this ayah in Surah At-Tawbah in the Quran al kareem Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Minha, from those 12 months, there are arba'atun hurum. There are four sacred ones. So let us go through it together, inshaAllah. What are the four sacred months? So Dhul Qaeda, we already mentioned it. We have three more Dhul Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. What about Ramadan? Ramadan is not included? Yes, that is correct. Ramadan is not included in the sacred months, but Ramadan has its own virtue, as we all know. So these are the four sacred months. During these times, the good deeds, the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He gives the believers, they are multiplied. And good deeds are multiplied anyway. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says, Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. The one who does a good deed, he will receive ten folds of that good deed. If you do a good deed, you will receive ten times that reward. And it is found in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that if you do any good deed, it will be multiplied anything between ten to, who knows the hadith, ten to seven hundred, exactly. Ten to seven hundred. And in the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, li, or as-siyamu li. Fasting is for me. وَأَنَا أَجَزِي بِهِ I, Rabbul Alameen, will rule the person. So we know that good deeds, they are now on a high. So now you're sitting in the masjid on the month of the Luqa'dah. If you did this just last month, Shawwal, you will not receive the same reward. So this shows the two things we mentioned. The mercy of Allah and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, how do we also see the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the kindness of Allah during this time? It is that the bad deeds, although we are in a sacred time, they are not multiplied. So if you do a bad deed in this time, do you receive a multiplication of sins? No, you do not. But the scholars have mentioned that a bad deed that is done in this time, it is magnified. There's a difference between multiplied and magnified. So the good deed, it is magnified and it is multiplied. The bad deed, it is not multiplied. And imagine if this was the case. That if you do a bad deed and you do a mistake and every single son of Adam sins, Every single son of Adam, every single Muslim, every single human being falls into error and mistake. He's not free from this, right? Imagine if every single mistake you did was multiplied for you. You already struggle with sins. And you don't know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you for it. But imagine if the case becomes more difficult upon you. That this sin that you did has now been multiplied in the sight of Allah. So it's not multiplied. This shows us the mercy of Allah. And it shows us the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like that, if you were to reflect over your life, ponder over your life, there is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for the believer except that it is out of his kindness subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact you're sitting in this masjid, this building, it has walls, it has doors, it has windows. But what makes this building different from the one that is opposite? That, that building that is opposite, perhaps it was built by the same person, the same company, the same firm, the same architect, the same engineer. This one doesn't have any sanctity at all. This one has sanctity because this one has become the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like those books up there and those books up there and those books up there, it is the Quran al kareem It is made up of paper and ink. A normal book is made up of paper and ink. But if you take a normal book, you can use the pages of it, rip it out, go to the toilet and you can clean yourself with that paper. It is allowed. But if somebody takes those pages from that book and does the same thing, this is an act of disbelief. What has changed? Paper, paper. Building, building. Now it has a sanctity. It has a special status. 
And this is also from the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He invited you to this special domain or this special building, this special area, this special place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has on the earth. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that the most beloved places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth they are the masajid, masajiduha. The most beloved places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth is the masajid. You now, you do not invite to your house except a person that you like, you are fond of. And if you do not give them an invitation, they cannot just break into your house and walk into your house. Otherwise, you will have to evict them and take them out because this is your property. If this is the case for you, then a higher case is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who is sitting here now, who has given the tawfiq to pray Salatul Maghrib in jama'ah, and to listen to a spiritual reminder, this is a person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted good for. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had mercy upon this person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was kind towards this person. Because there are so many of your friends and family members and people that you know, and even people you don't know. Where are they right now whilst you are listening to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this... Jalsa of Khair. Where are they? They are, they are in different places. They are doing different things. But it is you, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He chose. So like the Prophet ﷺ, He said, Man yuridi Allahu bihi khayran, yufaqihu fi deen. The one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for, He gives him an understanding of the religion. My reminder is not meant to be very long. It is something, inshaAllah ta'ala, that is just meant to come from the heart and be very brief. I wanted to remind myself and yourselves of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He advised all of the believers. Rather, He advised all of the people. He said subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ we, Rabbul Alameen, we have advised and commanded you, the Muslims. And we have commanded those who came before you to all have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this taqwa mean? If you have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you become an inhabitant, an inheritor of paradise. Where is this taken from? Where is the evidence? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in Surah Maryam, Tilka al-Jannah, that is paradise. Allati nurithuha min ibadina man kana taqiyya. We give it as inheritance to those slaves of ours that had taqwa. So taqwa, it was the objective of Ramadan. And I'm mentioning Ramadan a few times now because we just came out of it. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. The objective of Ramadan, it is taqwa. But in reality, it's not just the objective of Ramadan. It is the objective of your life. And if you wish to enter into the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to die upon this taqwa. The Prophet ﷺ, he never stood on a minbar, he never delivered any lecture or reminder, except that he would come with the khutbatul haja. And the khutbatul haja, the verses that the Prophet ﷺ would read, all included taqwa. He would say alayhi salatu wa salam, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ought to be feared. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ought to receive taqwa from you. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ and never die. Ensure that you never pass away except that you are Muslims. He would say this every single time. Which means it must have a significance. It must have a great relevance. And why did Allah say that we have advised you and the people before you to all have taqwa? It is without taqwa, you are not able to live a nice life in this world, let alone the next world. You are going to pass this world and you are going to go to the afterlife. If you want to have a nice life in this world, upon you is taqwa. Because if you are conscious of Allah and if you are mindful of Allah, Allah will grant you, Allah will give you, Allah will bless you, Allah will protect you. Anytime you raise your hands, Allah will accept your du'as and your pleas. Anytime that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you that thing. Anytime you are fearful of something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from that evil or that harm. This is the person who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the men from the people of the past, he came to the Sahaba and he asked them, what does taqwa mean? So the Sahabi, he replied and he said, imagine if one of you were to go into a garden or a park and there were to be thorns and things that will prickle you and injure you and harm you. And you have to navigate through this park and get from the start to the end, the beginning to the end. How would you traverse through it? How would you navigate through it? So this man, he said, I would go through the park, at times going on my left, at times going on my right. I would dodge, I will dive, and I will avoid all of those thorns in order for myself to get to the end. Basically, I will be very careful. That's what he said. So the Sahabi said, and that's what taqwa means. That you protect your limbs, that you protect your heart, that you protect 
your statements, your actions. You're very careful, you're very vigilant. This is what taqwa means. And you live under the surveillance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are under his surveillance. And imagine if you look at it only from a bad way. I'm under the surveillance of Allah. I can't do anything, any step I take, anything I want to utter, any action I want to make. I have to always think about Allah. That's a way of looking at it. And that's maybe not a very nice way because you are harming yourself and your soul and the shaitan are telling you that this is not something that is good for you. You should be free and so on and so forth. But there's a different way of looking at it. If you are under the surveillance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are under the watch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't that mean you are protected? Doesn't that mean you have been honored? You have been blessed. How many people are not under the watch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Whilst everybody is under the watch of Allah, how many people does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not look after, not protect? Many. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting you. So this is how you look at it. So we mentioned that taqwa, it is something that you have to live by. The great companion Ali ibn Abi Talib was asked about taqwa. And he said, taqwa, it is that you believe in revelation. This Quran that came down, you hear it in the prayer. You have it in the masajid. You hear the huffad and the people reading the Quran. What is your stance with this Quran? You have to believe in it. That every single thing that's in this book, from cover to cover, it has come from Allah. The wordings and the meanings. This is the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Not just the words. Like some have believed, and they believe that it has, the Quran is meaningless. No, the words is from Allah, the meanings are also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do you believe in revelation? And then you act by it, that's what he said. You act by it. Then you have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we mentioned this already. He said that you are somebody who is satisfied with little, you are content. And this is how the believer should be. You should always be satisfied with little. When it comes to your dunya, be satisfied. When it comes to your deen, never be satisfied. But the people have become opposite. When it comes to their dunya, they are not satisfied. They want more, and 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 they, want more, and they never stop. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, if you give one of them a valley of gold, a valley, not of pennies or uh, shillings or your money or our money, a valley of gold, a dhahab. Imagine how rich this person is. Who now do you know that has a valley of gold in our times? Nobody. Someone may have a bit of gold here and there. I'm sure we all have gold in our houses somewhere and our women folk and our wives and our mothers and our sisters, our daughters. But a valley of gold?